And I'm back with another 3DFX video. But there is good reason for it, because 3DFX would have turned 30 years if they would still be operational. 3DFX was established in 1994 in August and was defunct about 8 years later. Most of us will remember how parts of 3DFX was sold to Nvidia and the rest was just dissolved. So today I have my last two broken Voodoo cards here. At least Voodoo 1s and Voodoo 2s. I have a few Voodoo 3 cards that will come at some point in the future, but this is all BGA rework and I'm not yet comfortable with that, but it will come at some point. So today we have two brothers. This is the smaller one. It's a Diamond Monster 3D, the original Voodoo card. There are some of these pads that should be populated with some additional capacitors. So they have been ripped off and the others are a little bit roughed up. And there are bent pins on the FBI chip, so we need to check and figure out what's going on here and uh, straighten them. This card is almost certainly from the scrapyard. I found this. There was one day I had a lot of luck and I found three 3DFX cards. You have maybe seen the other card that I rescued from the scrapyard. It's this one here. This, there's already a video about this card on my channel. We were fixing a lot of SMD components on this card. But this card works perfectly fine now. The problem with this card is I think there are most likely a few issues at the back. I'm not sure, but it could be that there are a few broken SMD components on the back. So we should check this just in case. I don't want to have a shorted capacitor or something like this on that card. And we will fix those pins in the corner and then we can test it. I will leave the capacitors out for the end, I think, before I start anything. I want to see if this card actually delivers a picture. And then this card works perfectly fine. So why is it here on my workboard? The card works fine when it's used by itself, but the moment it is part of an SLI setup, I get a weird behavior on the screen. It renders fine, but in between the screen gets dark for like a fraction of a second and comes back. It's not that there is an issue with the rendering, I think. It continues to render, but I'm losing the signal on the screen. It is random, I cannot reproduce it 100%. So I suspect the pins to be loose from the pads and the problem is I already poked a little bit around with my small tweezers and I think I fixed it. So whatever I show you today how this card behaves is done by me through editing. But I think when I used my tweezers to poke around this card I hit that pin that was responsible for the blackouts. And yeah, this is a little bit unfortunate. Nevertheless, I can still show you that even though it looks like that all the legs make perfect connection to the pads, they are not. There are weak solder spots and most likely these affect the quality of the electrical signals that go through them. I cannot explain it better, but this is what I think. So what I will do today is I will reflow all the solder spots around all three 3DFX chips because otherwise this card is in pristine condition. There is no scratch, there is no broken SMD components, nothing. This one looks really, really, really good. So yeah, let's uh, maybe jump under the microscope and uh, let's start with this card. We will first look at the Diamond Monster 3D and straighten those pins and then we will see if we spot something else because I think this card is actually from the scrapyard. But before we start, a quick shout out to PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video. If you are in need of CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication or injection molding, you should definitely check out PCBWay.com. I'm using PCBWay services for over 2 years now and the quality of the PCBs I ordered were always top notch. To place an order, you just have to upload your Gerber files and then you can customize your order. Select the thickness, color and finishing. And within a couple of days, you will receive your PCBs from PCBWay. You can also check out PCBWay's shared project space where hobbyists and professionals share their work. Links are in the video description. This is the Diamond Monster 3D under the microscope. We are looking at the corner of the FBI chip and you can see here how the pins are almost touching. So this is something that we need to fix before we even attempt to plug this card into a test system. If I show you the leg, the bottom of the pin. So this one is touching the other one, the adjacent pin, definitely. 
So this one we have to straighten and it looks like this pin still has contact with the pad, but it's almost gone. So we have to be very gentle and careful that we are not damaging the pins that are next to it or worse, rip it off. Okay, no, this is loose. So there you go. Okay, this was a good one. It was a little bit harsh, but I think we are halfway there. Okay, I may try to apply fresh solder over these pins completely to reinforce them a little bit. They feel very soft. I just try to twist it back into place. Just very careful. Okay, and I think that's it. This is all we need to do here. All the other legs look okay. They are still attached to their pads. And I think we're done. So we have adjusted all those pins. That looks better than I thought. Now, if there will be a fresh layer of solder over it, you probably will not notice that there was something going on. Okay. Okay, looks good. Now let's have a look at the smaller chip, the TMU. Texture mapping unit. It's just a little bit dirty. Mm, here looks like we have some oxidation there. You have to see what happens when we put flux and solder again. And this one looks good, this side. And the last side, there's something that's still a little bit bent here. This one pin or two pins look like they have been deformed a little bit, not much. Okay, and I think we're almost done here as well. This one looks okay. As I said, one wrong move, a snap or something, and you could really damage quite a bit. And it's always an issue when you make things worse before you make them better. I learned that the hard way, I guess. Okay, so this card is okay. C101, capacitor is missing. Memory chips. They look okay. Here's one missing. And two more missing. But otherwise, I think the front of the card looks quite decent. Even the capacitors that are still on the board, even though they are scratched, I think they are okay. And the golden pin connectors, all... Uh, this one doesn't look nice. This has got a big, deep scratch here. This one connector. Hmm... Nothing tragic, but not nice. Okay, let's move around to the other side. These ones look good. Oh. 
Hey, so here we have a cracked component, L. This is most likely a ferrite bead. This is something that I learned from a Maxi Gamer 3D, also a Voodoo 1 card. One of those ferrite beads was damaged. Initially, I thought that this is like an inductor, but they behave a little bit differently. I will see if I can find a spare somewhere, but this one definitely got a nice knock on the side and cracked. What else do we have? Yeah, this this card definitely scrubbed over some other electronics. Mm. Oh. I think this capacitor is not in the right orientation. This one decided to be different. This one will fix while we are fixing this ferrite bead, unless I find something else on this card. Most of them have just scratches on it, so this is not a big problem. Oh, so here's one more cap that needs to be replaced. This is this one lost half of its housing. So this we need to replace. I don't know what C65 is. I think I should look up a component map. If you remember for the Voodoo 2, we had a component map available. I have a feeling that we also have one for the Diamond Monster 3D, the Voodoo 1. Okay, there is one more capacitor, C60 oh, and C59 is also damaged. Though these two need to be replaced. And maybe this one here too, C57. Okay, we have like four or five capacitor and that one ferrite bead that needs to be replaced. And then we can test this card, I think. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any component map for the Diamond Monster 3D, so I have to go to one of my working Diamond Monster 3Ds and measure the components that are on the same location as on this ones that are either broken or uh, half, half gone. So let's just quickly test these components here, these ferrite beads. My multimeter is in continuity mode. And yes, yes. And this one looks like it does have continuity. However, it has that crack in the housing. So I feel better if we replace this one. Most likely this would work. Very interesting. But yeah, I have one here. I don't know if you can measure these somehow. I don't know which one this is. I took this from another, I think a motherboard. It definitely has also continuity. So I think it doesn't matter that much for these older cards, which components we are using here, as long as they're doing about the same stuff. So I will just replace this component with this one and we will see if the card will work. All these caps look the same, so I'm assuming they all have the same value. C59, C57, and C61. Also, they are the odd-numbered capacitors, so it does make a little bit sense. Let's see. Still verifying by testing all of them. And C65 is a 100 nanofarad. C61 is a 100 nanofarad capacitor. C59, 100 nanofarad. C57, 100 nanofarad. So 100 nanofarad caps.
So I decided that I will continue to solder the capacitors on this board because if I clean it now and then I put the capacitors back on, then I have to clean it again. So I just want to save a little bit time for me and get these four capacitors installed on that board and then we can test the card. So the card is almost ready. I just want to double check this one area that we saw here where we had all this discoloration, which looks like corrosion to be honest. So what I will do is I will just reflow this entire area with fresh solder or just heat it up, use the reuse the existing solder. And just to make sure that this part is not getting worse. But I don't think there is a problem with the with a connection to the pad. Right, let's just double check what this is going to look like if you're... Oh yeah, this is corroded. I noticed because the solder doesn't melt nicely. Hmm. That's not good. So, what I will do here is I will just create a lot of solder bridges now. I just need to make sure that we get that corrosion off. And the best way of doing this, unless you have a better suggestion, is to use fresh solder. And you can see already how things are getting loose and float around. Yeah, this is not good. Hmm. And I'm moving pins around. Which is also not good. Okay, this is a little bit more tricky than I thought. Another option would be to scrap it off with solder wick. Let's see if this works better than just going over with fresh solder. Okay, let's try. Increase the heat a little bit. I'm at 350 now. So and now let's see. Can we get rid of this 
stuff that's everywhere. Oh yeah, that definitely looks better. Luckily, I think it's worse in that corner. The closer we go to the center of the chip, the less corrosion there was. You can maybe see that there is sometimes a little bit of corrosion attached to the pins. Okay, we are actually almost done with the chip, at, at least this side. I think I didn't see anything like this on the other sides of this chip, only here. Now let's add a little bit fresh flux. And try another round with fresh solder. And see how this goes. Okay, so, hmm. The sort of still has some trouble attaching to the pins and the pad to make a nice bridge connection. Hmm. Let's see, let's go forward. Let's go forward and take as much corrosion as we can away and then we go over it one more time with the solder bic and then let's see what is the final result and you still see there are still bits and pieces of corrosion coming off the pins and the pads and it doesn't form that nice deposit of solder when you're going over it and like here this one here for instance you see it, it doesn't it doesn't want yet but we will get there okay this looks much better now still a little bit but ah Not good. Mm. Too much pressure. Okay. Mm. Maybe better to move up and down instead of left and right. So it will not. Disturb the pads too much. Okay. I think these pads here are pretty okay. It was just in this top right corner. And this one looks now really good. I mean, yeah, I just messed up this one pad a little bit, but here we go. Okay, and now we can go ahead and re-solder all the pins, make sure that everyone has a nice solder bridge to the pad. And then I think we're done with this card. I will still double check the other sides of the chip, make sure that there is no corrosion like this one. Okay, so one more time flux because we took most of it away now with a solder wick and this side is good to go that was not expected to have so much corrosion here but we had to fix it Okay, now this looks much nicer.
Okay. One last time here. I think we need a little bit more solder on these pins. And now the side looks perfect. Okay. So now I also decided to reflow the sort of all pins on this chip, probably also on the FBI. So I just don't want to have any type of corrosion or weak solder spots on this Voodoo card. Sometimes it's just better instead of wasting time testing and redoing things to just go ahead and finish it. But here it looks fine. So this is really located to this one side of the TMU chip as it looks like. But yeah, still odd. Why would it only corrode there and I don't see anything else around this chip. Uh, it was facing the back of the of the PC case. You never know what kind of conditions this card was exposed to. So it could be that there was just something unfavorable for these solder joints. But now with a fresh solder layer, uh, rework the entire chip, I'm pretty sure this card will be fine for a very, very long time. It took 30 years approximately for this solder to get bad. So now it has another 30 years maybe. Uh. Okay. So let's take this excess solder away. I will work on the FBI chip. I'll just do everything while I'm at it. Okay. So it looks good now. I just have to clean this card properly later on. Flux is very sticky. Beautiful. I also said before that I will fix the top of this chip here a little bit. I will do this right now. There is a layer of something above these pins. So let's see when I go with a soldering iron over it. They get nice and shiny. Nice. The rest will be taken away by isopropyl alcohol and a brush to make this look nice. Okay, I will not go further. Okay, so I just finished cleaning up the Diamond Monster 3D and I'm quite happy with the result. Those solder joints look really good. All the corrosion has disappeared and all of the pins of these 3dfx chips are now freshly soldered to the pads and i don't think we will get any issues with this card this was the side where the corrosion was on there is still sometimes a little bit i don't know some residue between the pins but it's not visible that much so there is nothing else to do on this card. I already added the capacitors. I fixed the SMDs on the back. We resolded all the pins on the 3DFX chips. So yeah, let's put this card in the test system and see what's going to happen. Okay, the diamond monster is in the test system. Let's see if it works and we get a video output. System is on. Oh, yes, we do get an output, that's good. So that means we have a functioning card that can switch between 2D and 3D. Let's see if we can start Mojo. 
yes, we get an output and we have two megabytes FBI memory and we have two megabytes on the TMU. So this Voodoo 1 seems to be working. That's great news. So let's just go to Tomb Raider and we start the 3DFX Voodoo 1 patch. Yes, we get a 3DFX logo and it looks perfect. There is no memory corruption. And we get a menu with the frame counter. So we are running in 3DFX mode. Let's just double check if we can also play the game. And everything looks as we expect. Yes, this game looks exactly like it should. And I think we fixed this Diamond Monster 3D. This card was from the scrapyard. I can't believe it. Yeah, I needed some work, but most likely everything that happened to this card happened at the scrapyard. That card was perfectly working when it was thrown out. Okay, so since this card seems to be working now, I guess it's time to have a look at the Diamond Monster 3D2. The Voodoo 2 card. That Voodoo 2 has a very weird behavior. It works perfectly fine when it's the only card in the system, but the moment I hook it up in an SLI setup, we get black screens randomly on the screen. So the symptom of this Voodoo 2 is that, let's say you play a game or you're on a benchmark, randomly every couple of seconds the screen turns black and then it comes back. And this is only for a fraction of a second. The game seems to continue to render in the background, but the screen loses the signal somehow. As I said before, I suspect that there is an issue with the connections of the pins of the 3DFX chips to the pads of the card. And we'll have a look at this under the microscope in a moment. But I already poked with my tweezers around the 3DFX chips and I may have made it better. So I fixed this problem a little bit by poking around with my tweezers. That's a little bit unfortunate. I still hope I can reproduce this problem. But enough of this now, let's switch this off and have a look at the other Voodoo 2. So the two Voodoo cards are in the test system and if we check the properties, let's see if we have the SLI detected. Okay. And okay, okay unfortunately this driver doesn't have a nice display of the details of both Voodoo cards, but we see the scanline interleaf has been detected. Total texture memory is 16 megabytes. This is of both Voodoo cards. And we have the frame buffer at eight megabytes, which is four for each card. So yeah, we have a 24 megabyte dual Voodoo 2 setup here. And now let's just see how this one Voodoo card behaves when we play something like Unreal. Here it was, I didn't do anything. This is not me modifying the edit. I'm not touching the video output. This is original, that black screen that you've seen before. This is exactly the behavior that I get with one of these Voodoo cards. The Voodoo card we are trying to look at today. Let's see if we get another flicker of the screen. So maybe it wasn't 100% fixed by me poking around. We can also see quickly, let's see, we should be able to run this at this resolution, 1024 by 768. Since we have two Voodoo cards in there, this resolution is possible. And we also should get quite decent frame rates. Well, 30 frames, around 30 frames. I guess this is good. But let's see if we get the black screen. So no, it doesn't look like I get the black screen again. But we saw one instance, so I will not edit anything. You saw the live footage. This is what it did multiple times and sometimes in rapid succession. So there is definitely something going on and I'm pretty sure I improved it by poking around with my tweezers around the 3dfx chips 
but otherwise you can see that there is no issue with the rendering so both 3dfx cards definitely work together we are running at a resolution of 1024 by 768 as you probably have seen it's just a black screen but it continued to render the scene so i'm pretty sure there is some communication problem delivering the image to the screen the rest of the voodoo cards seem to be working fine so this is the voodoo 2 now we are looking at one of the tmus the one on the left this is tmu 1 if i'm not mistaken this is the card that has an issue when we are running the card in SLI. And what I want to show you is that the pins that look quite okay, they look like they're attached to their pads, they are not. So let's just randomly pick one of those pins. I already scratched a few of them because I went over many of them and was a little bit concerned how poorly they are attached. But let's check. So let me check this one here, for instance. So you can see this one here looks like it's on it. But when I push a little bit, you can see that it moves. Can you see that? This is not a good solid joint. I can actually move this entire leg away from its pad. So you see, I moved this all the way there now and I can move it back. It is still connected to the pad, but the solder is just, it's very, very weak. And I can push it back as well. And there are a lot of these pins here. Let me just see. Let's say, let's increase the light a little bit. So let's just pick a random other one like this one here. Let's see if we can move it. Yes, you see, I can just push it. I have to put pressure on it, but I can just push it to the side. Let's push it back. You see, it's moving. It's still attached to the pad, but it does no longer provide a proper connection. And they're all like this. See, I can just move the leg. It's just moving. So I believe that one of these or a lot of these legs have just issues with a proper connection to the pad. I don't know if it's now the communication between the two TMU chips or the TMU and the FBI chip. All of these solder joints are weak and we need to reflow the entire card. Now this of course will be a little bit boring so I maybe show you a little bit, put some music in the background so you can just look at the solder technique or the solder section if you want to have a look at this. But basically I just put flux around, re-solder all three chips and then we will test the card again. Yeah, and then we fixed two 3DFX cards today. So this is the bottom side of one of the TMUs. Yeah, you see, you can just push this this leg around. It's not too much pressure, but it shouldn't be like this. This one should be rock solid. See, I can just move this leg. Okay. I don't want to push too much, you know, one slip and then suddenly disaster. So let's not do that. I'm going to resolder these legs and then we'll test the card, see what happens.
And we are booting. So both Voodoo cards are in the test system now. Let's see if we start Unreal and play around a little bit. If we see the black screen reappearing. I hope not, but we will see. So first of all, let's see if our card is detected. Or both cards. I have two Voodoo 2s in there. System information. Yes. So again, we have... 8 megabytes frame buffer and 16 megabytes texture mapping. Okay, then let's see if Unreal fires up now and maybe we have fixed our problem. If you go back in the video, you will see that some of the places had texture corruption. It was not only on this specific corner where we will pass by right now again. So right here, oh no, it was there again. Ah, oh, okay, <laughs> too, too early. So it must be something else. I guess this is just a problem in Unreal. But so far the test seems to be working very very well. There is no flickering, there is no other discoloration whatsoever. So I think this Voodoo 2 is working as well. Yeah, with time these solder joints are just getting weak. They got really, really soft. You saw how the legs were moving left and right if you just poked them a little bit. But now I'm really happy that this was all that this card needed. And most of the cards most likely can be saved by just reflowing the solder around the 3DFX chips. So yeah, I think this is all for this video. It's uh, probably quite long already anyway. Then, thank you so much for watching, thank you for your time, thanks to all my Patreons for their support, um, and a big thanks to PCBWay who are sponsoring this channel and make all these videos possible. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Thank you, and bye-bye.